Hello, I'm Kate Findlay and today I want to show you how I'm going to make this piece inspired by a recent morning walk. I want to show you what I'm going to do with using the tolls and netting to create the shadows and the effect of the winter trees. So in this piece today, I want to show you how you might incorporate organzas and shears and tolls into your work. Uh, so here I've got a, a fine dark blue net uh, and a, a very fine tull and a couple of organzas that I want to use to make my landscape piece. I work on felt, so this is my background. Um, so I've just used a, a white piece of felt and I've actually already bonded on two pieces of fabric so uh, a, a textured piece of the sky and a hand dyed piece here which is going to be the grass. What I'm going to do is use some pieces of Misty Fuse. Now Misty Fuse is a very very fine fusible web so I'm going to put some Misty Fuse down at the top here and just trim away the extra pieces and then I've cut a piece of the uh, blue organza because I wanted to make some of the sky darker stronger blue. I also want to show uh, where the uh, sun is going to be uh, so the lightest point shining through the trees that I'm going to put on top and to soften the edge I'm going to put another piece of organza on top like that. Uh, now it's not all going to stick down but enough of it will stick down at this point to hold it in place. But before I iron it, I'm just going to put a distant line of trees across the two. Uh, and this actually I've pre-bonded uh, already so that will stick as well. So I'm just going to iron that down. I always tend to use uh, a piece of paper, non-stick paper, so this comes off the back and of... And I've got uh, a, a very dark mottled uh, bluey black that I'm going to use for my uh, winter trees uh, and again I have pre-bonded that so it's ready to cut. I'm going to use a rotary cutter to cut some of this really good for cutting curves and I'm going to want to build up my uh, tree trunk shapes the great thing about using a rotary cutter is that uh, once you've pre-bonded the fabric then all these tiny little pieces are still going to stick down even though they really are quite uh, quite fine use every little scrap up. Okay so I haven't got my trees uh, in position. I'm just going to put down some paper again and very carefully give those a press to iron them in position. Okay, uh, so the next stage is to actually uh, put a little bit more fusible web on top because I'm going to build up the, uh, the twigs of the tree with some tulle. And you can 
can see it's very it's fairly visible on there not to say it's not visible but it's uh, it's it's barely there and by the time i've got some stuff on top it's really not going to be easy to see so i'm using some of this very very fine black tulle uh, and this is going to form the twigs so it would just give a it's like shading really with you know with watercolor almost uh, you can get a wonderful uh, extra layer but you can still see through what's the nice thing is where they begin to overlap and you get uh, slightly darker patches let's give that a press again This is where it really is important to have uh, a protective piece of paper because of Okay, so that's the trees as a starting point. I might add more, but it's uh, that's that's going okay. Uh, and then one other thing I wanted to do was put in some shadows. I've got the sun shining through behind the trees, and I wanted to use this uh, dark blue net. To play around with some shadows. So again I'm going to put a piece of uh, fusible web, misty fuse again, on here and I might try and cut a, a few bits away if I think it's not going to be covered by the net. Right, so move that up a bit. Okay so I like the idea of the net coming on here and actually being layered to create the shadows. So I'm kind of play around with the uh, shadow effects. Might be worth using a couple of pins to hold this in place. Pin in there. And I just really want to try and get Two slightly wider, let's just cut that away. And then I want to do the same bit, same thing with this group here. So I'll have a bit more happening here, overlapping a bit at the top, and then creating more shadows. Just a couple of pins, so I think you're beginning to get the idea of what's happening there. Okay, so I've got everything ironed in place. So what I need to do now is get some stitching onto the trees to get the finer branches. So I set up my machine with my free motion embroidery foot and I've just got a, a black thread uh, in there currently to see if I can stitch some more details onto the trees.
So you can see here now I've stitched quite a lot of the trees. Um, so I've got the bare branches and then the shadowy effect of the, the tiny twigs. Uh, and now I just need to spend a bit of time uh, putting some stitching on the netting to hold it down. So I've chosen a, a dark blue thread for that and I'm just going to do a little bit of stitching on this as well. Just take a little bit care of care because some of these bits might not be uh, attached that firmly and it can catch. can see here that actually what I wanted to do was create some stitching that was uh, much more textured and uneven rather than straight lines uh, to pick up on the lumpy tussocky grass. So I'll just carry on stitching that uh, to add a bit more texture. 